Hi guys, welcome back to the Cupcake Gemma channel with me, Dane, and if you're new here, welcome. But if you're not, sup, you know the drill. We're gonna bake something really delicious today, and I'm gonna be sharing with you a recipe for my ultimate chocolate malt cupcake. It's got a velvety chocolate malt sponge, a brown sugar malt cream filling, and a rich whipped chocolate ganache icing. And it's studded with malt biscuits and dipped in chocolate. And this cupcake is more like a sophisticated version of a basic Malteser cupcake, and you are gonna love it. I'm gonna start by making the rich chocolate ganache topping because that needs to go in the fridge for a little bit and set before we can whip it up and pipe it. So I'm gonna use a mixture of milk chocolate, I've got 300 grams, and also 54% chocolate. You can more find this in the supermarket these days. They sell it in like the bar and it's 50, it's it's not as dark as 70%, it's a little bit less intense, a little bit more sweet, but I didn't want to just use milk chocolate because I wanted a little bit more richness. So 150 grams of that, and then to those, I'm just gonna add 250 grams of double cream, and it's as simple as that. I've already got on the hob a pan with water. It's been simmering a little bit. It's just gonna melt the chocolate and the cream together and make it all luscious. So I'm just gonna give this a little stir. We'll just leave the ganache to do its thing for about five to eight minutes until it's all melted down. We'll keep checking on it. It's only just there, it's not going anywhere. But in the meantime, we'll make the chocolate cupcake batter and it could not be simpler. So I've already melted down some 70% chocolate, 100 grams and 60 grams of vegetable oil. It doesn't take very long, I think because the oil gets hot and the chocolate is in chips, so it's super quick, like two minutes. And you can use it hot, so just pour that straight into a large bowl. To that, I'm gonna add 200 grams of caster sugar and just give it a whisk. It doesn't need to be whisked for long. It's not really gonna do much, to be honest. That is pretty much it. To that, I'm gonna add two large eggs. Crack them straight into the bowl. I can't do the double-handed crack. Admittedly, sometimes I get shallow, okay? Sue me, but don't, because it's expensive and it takes a long time. <laughs> um, and just give that a whisk until it's a nice, smooth, shiny mixture. This mixture is ready. Now to add some more liquids. I've just got 45 grams of hot water going in. And then I've also got 70 grams of sour cream. I just feel like it adds a nice kind of like little bit of a tang to the chocolate. And it's just a little bit different to buttermilk. Then we're gonna add the malt to this. So I feel like you can use malt powder. We have done that in cupcakes before, but I just wanted to test out something different. So I'm gonna be using this malt extract. It's runny, it almost looks like honey, and it smells really intense. It's like if you mixed honey and Horlicks together. It's pretty cool. So I'm just gonna measure out 60 grams of this into the bowl. Just give that a really good beat until it's all well combined. Once all the wet ingredients are in, just come back to your ganache for like a second, give it a stir and see how it's doing. It's looking good, but it's not quite there yet. So back to the cupcakes. We're just gonna add half a teaspoon of vanilla extract. As always, you can get this on cupcakegemma.com. It's the best stuff. It's got all the seeds in there, all of the flavor. And then I'm going to add 125 grams of plain flour. And to that, just a quarter teaspoon of salt and a quarter teaspoon of bicarb. Now, when I was experimenting with this, I did actually add a little bit too much bicarb and they all overflowed. And that's just the danger with baking in general, but also using malt extract and Horlicks. Something about the science in there just doesn't quite compute sometimes. So just give that a mix until you've got a really smooth batter and you can't see any bits of flour. And there's something that can be said for over mixing, but also under mixing. So make sure you give this mixture a good beat for like 40, 45 seconds or so. We'll just take the whisk out and the ganache should be done. It's nice and smooth and glossy. So this can go straight into the fridge to chill for about 45 minutes or so. And now the cupcake batter, we are going to put this in a big jug so we can make it easier for ourselves to put into the cupcake tin. And then using a spoon to guide the batter, you just wanna fill these cupcake cases just a little over half full.
And then I've got my oven preheated to 170 degrees and these will go in and bake for anywhere between 18 to 20 minutes. You just want to check them at 18 and if they spring back, then they're done. If not, give them another couple of minutes. Cupcakes are baked and cooled and our ganache is also ready. It's nice and soft and squishy and malleable. And every five, maybe 10 minutes in the fridge, just continually stir it a little bit and then put it back in so that it chills nice and evenly. But we're gonna get on with the multi sugary cream filling. It's delicious. We've just got some double cream, 115 grams, and two tablespoons of dark brown sugar, which I've already sifted, and a tablespoon of Horlicks, and just a pinch of salt. And then just give it a whisk. Whisk it together, and I'm just going side to side whisking, because you know sometimes your arm can get a bit tired. You go like that, and then you could switch it up and tilt the bowl and whisk it like this if you're getting a bit tired, but it's only a small amount. Just want to whisk the cream until it soft peaks like this. And then we'll move that to one side and get on with whipping the chocolate ganache. Now, it's really important to whip it because it just makes it a lot softer and lighter, easier to pipe, it's really thick at the moment. And also, when you whip it, it gets more air in there, it gets the volume, and you'll get more out of it. It's nice and whipped, it's really smooth. And you'll also see that it's gone a lot lighter in color as well, look at that. It's almost like a chocolate mousse really delicious. So all that's left to do is just pop this into a piping bag fitted with a large round nozzle and then with the cream also put that in a piping bag but no nozzle needed. So I've just got my apple core here and that is the best thing to take the middle out of a cupcake and we're just gonna fill it with the cream but make sure when you do use the apple core don't go all the way down to the bottom because the filling's quite wet it will seep through the paper and then you just get a soggy bottom, which is never good. So when you're filling the cupcake, just make sure you put the piping bag right down to the bottom and pipe up to the top. Fill the last one and then we'll move on to piping them. So I'm just gonna do a simple round on these cupcakes and make it nice and plump like this. And we'll carry on, just make sure it's a nice even pressure and then just give a little swirl on top. Now the next thing to do, I wanted to tie in a little bit more maltiness to this cupcake and also a little bit of crunch because it's all very soft. I've got some malted milk biscuits. Now these, if you don't know what they are, malted milk biscuits are basically a tea time treat here in, in England and um, you'll find them in the supermarket. They're really common. They're almost like a cross between nice biscuits and shortbread. They've got a really nice crunch to them. So I just um, broke them up into tiny little pieces and we're just gonna stud the icing. And make sure that you stand the biscuits up straight so that it adds quite a lot of drama and height to the cupcake. putting the last few biscuits on the last cupcake. And you'll notice that I've not gone down the sides of these because the last thing we're gonna do is dip them in chocolate. So I want like a nice clean border around the icing. So it's just like biscuits covered in chocolate and then icing. I think they're all done. Before we dip them in chocolate though, we need to put them in the fridge to chill for about 20 minutes so that when we dip them, it doesn't all fall off. Cupcakes have been in the fridge for about 25, 30 minutes. The sponge is still really soft, the icing is firmer, and the biscuits have stuck. Definitely not gonna come off. I mean, they were stuck in the icing anyway, but this is just a guarantee, an insurance policy, if you will. So I've just got some melted chocolate here, about 400 grams of 54% melted chocolate, the same that we used in the ganache, and it's cooled down, and I'm just gonna dunk them like this. Don't go all the way because like I said before, we only put the biscuits about just on the top so that you can still see when you dunk this, make sure that you shake all the excess chocolate off as well because it will have gone all in the crevices of those biscuits. This takes a little time, but it's worth it. Look at that, you've got that rim. You can still see of the ganache, mountainous, rocky biscuits on top. Incredible. Mm -hmm. 
Look how beautiful these look. I'm obsessed with anything shiny and chocolate. It just looks so good. The final flourish on top of these. It's just a little dusting of cocoa powder. I thought it would just add another dimension and another texture as well. So just a little dusting on top like this and they are complete. These look super pretty and I cannot wait to tuck in. So let's give it a little um, wrap. And I'm actually gonna cut this in half because I know I've got a big mouth, but I really cannot do the whole thing in one. Mm. That cream filling is really nice and sweet. It's got the maltiness coming through from the Horlicks and the sponge is really velvety and just squishy. And also, because it's not got cocoa powder in, you can really taste the malt extract. It's got like a subtleness to it. And I think that's because the pairing of chocolate and malt is quite harmonious. And it's just a little hmm, but it's there. It's there. And the ganache is really rich, but not too rich. It's the perfect sweetness. And also, the biscuits add another dimension. So glad I put something crunchy in there. It's got all the perfect elements of a cupcake that you would want and need. Well, thank you so much for watching and I hope that you make these cupcakes. I feel like this is the reason, the primary reason, if you're an OG, the reason why you come to the channel for the cupcakes and we've given you another smash out the park recipe. So if you do make this, make sure that you at Cupcake Gemma, hashtag Cupcake Gemma on Instagram and also at me, Dame Pemberton on Instagram because I love seeing what you make from the channel. It's a smash. And we'll be back next week with another recipe. But until then, enjoy these, make them, eat them, and show us. See you next time.